guys, <clears throat> welcome to a later than normal Friday Waffle. Um, just had a bit on today, obviously I've been at work and I was actually in the office today. Um, so I didn't get an opportunity to make this at lunchtime like I usually do. I trust you're all well and looking forward to the weekend. Although, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, I've just had a, a large curry to eat and it always uh, <clears throat> makes, me <clears throat> makes me have to clear my throat, excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> oh dearie me. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, the weather's certainly taking a turn for the worse. Um, outside it's been absolutely pissing the rain um, all day. What on earth was that? I just heard some banging coming through me. Mm. <coughs> anyway, excuse me. Yeah, um, <coughs> what have I been up to the last seven days? Um, gaming wise, I've not. This sounds like a, a really familiar. Uh, Tailless, I've not been playing very much at all. Um, <coughs> excuse me. What have I been doing? What have I been doing? <laughs> I've probably been spending a lot of time making my arcade perfect, uh, arcade perfect my arse videos. Um, as you probably appreciate, guys, <coughs> when you're uh, when you're you're featuring like 10, 11, 12, whatever it is, games, it takes a bit of time. Um, as you'll probably notice if you've watched any of them, I've actually uh, started using my PC um, to record them. It's it's quick for two reasons. A, it's uh, excuse me, I've got all the emulators on the computer, and uh, so it's like a one-stop shop. And secondly, the file sizes are absolutely tiny in comparison. I mean, this thing that I'm doing just now. If this goes on for about half an hour, 40 minutes, so it's going to run to like 2 gig, 3 gig, whatever. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> using the, the software on, the, on the, the computer, they're absolutely tiny in comparison, so it makes a big difference. And I think yeah, I've had some good feedback. You guys seem to uh, quite enjoy these uh, videos, even though it's not kind of pointing the camera at the screen. But you're, you're getting better quality, you're getting better kind of uh, sound production. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> I sound like that guy with the fast show that can't stop coughing. Anyway, yeah. Um, anything else game related? Um, apart from making uh, making videos, um, we recorded our latest podcast, the Edinburgh Retro PC Club. And I'm going to be doing a little. Uh, I think it's actually getting uh, finalised tonight, so I'm going to make a little video just kind of promoting that. Um, we're now on iTunes, so if you check out iTunes under Edinburgh Retro PC, you can see our podcast. We've now made. Uh, 10 of them, That's, it was number 10 we made uh, on Wednesday. <coughs> so yeah, that's it, that's been this week. Um, so anyway, what have I got for you? Right, I've got a few, uh, <coughs> I've got a few topics. The first one is, uh, I've called it, that moment you realise your retro collection is getting out of hand. Now what do I mean by that? Um, as some of you may know, uh, may know from my uh, my sort of pickup video thing or <laughs> stuff what I bought. I don't like pickup videos. Stuff what I bought video. Um, I picked up a PlayStation Two and I think it was 48, 49 games for it. And uh, I don't know why, but <clears throat> as I was trying to kind of move stuff to make space, it just I don't know. It was almost like a tipping point for me. It got me thinking. Enough's enough. Um, seriously, I don't have any more room in this little room of mine. Um, I seriously don't. I've now, it's getting to the stage, I've now got, I wouldn't say more, but I've certainly got probably just as much systems and games in the loft, which is just silly. Um, <clears throat> aye, I, so, um, I mean, I'll be, I'll be perfectly honest, uh, I've got a lot of duplicate systems. Um, I've got two Vectrexes, I've got three, four Mega Drives, I've got three Commodore 64s, I think I've got about four Amigas. Um, I've got a lot of duplicate machines now. It seemed great thinking, oh, backup machines. But you know what, at the end of the day, if a machine was to go down, then I can just bloody all go and buy another one. It's different, you know, like a Vectrex, they're hard to come by. But things like Commodore 64, Spectrums, Amigas, they're all sort of 10 a penny. So if my uh, machine goes down, I can just go out and buy another one off eBay. 
So, uh, <clears throat> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly going to consider selling off some stuff. I mean, I've got a mega CD up in the loft, which I have used. I got it at a car boot sale. I used it. I tested it, and it's been up in the loft ever since. I mean, I've got a. I was going to say I've got the mega drive, uh, EverDrive, but mega CDs don't work in EverDrive. But you know what? There are so few Mega Drive or EverDrive. Shut up! Put my teeth back in. There are so few Mega CD games that I would actually want to play. I just don't see myself ever playing it. So I'm thinking along the lines of like stuff like that. That stuff that I just, I, you know what? I mean, someday I remember people used to say, not talking about retro games, but just stuff in general. If you've never, if you've never used something in a year, you're never likely to use it. And that's absolutely true. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, I've got a shitload of stuff that I've simply never, ever, ever, ever used. So I think I'm going to start cutting back. I'm going to start selling stuff off. The only problem is, um, I sold a wireless router that I bought about two years ago. I think I paid about 60 quid for it. I sold it on eBay um, last week. Four pound fifty postage, and it sold for two pound fifty. Yep, two pound fifty for a sixty pound router that I was never going to use. But you know what? It actually it was more hassle me posting the bloody thing than it was getting two pound fifty for it. I'd have been quicker and easier and probably cheaper when I mean, you can take into consideration peril throwing the bloody thing in the bucket. So yeah, eBay's. I'm not too convinced on eBay. But what else have you really got? You've got eBay. You've got Gumtree. Um, I suppose I could make a video stuff for sale if anyone's interested in anything. So yeah, I've got the Mega CD <clears throat> and something that I picked up not that long ago and I'm thinking to myself, is it worthwhile hanging on to it, is my 32X. <sighs> I've used it once, um, I don't know. Anyway, I'm kind of waffling a bit guys, because, well this is the Friday waffle after all. I've got a few things I want to talk about, but uh, yeah, so you know, I'm, I'm certainly going to think about cutting back on my collection. I mean, uh, I've got a, a system there that I picked up last week, which I want to I want to do a, a wee video on. It's quite an interesting uh, sort of piece of retro kind of game and stuff anyway. So, aye, I think uh, I've got to the stage now, I've got probably too much stuff, um, and I think I need to start cutting back a wee bit. Not because I have to, it's because I want to. You know, selling stuff that you don't use that's no, you know, that's that's absolutely fine. I mean, I'll, I'll there's a, what is it, the PC Engine or the Turbo Graphics. There's an EverDrive cartridge which is fifty five quid um, online, and I was going to buy one of these. But what I thought to myself is, I'll sell some stuff, get the money, and then I'll uh, I'll use the money to buy that. So yep, I'm going to cut down on my on my collection a bit, guys. Um, I don't know what you guys think of cutting back in collections. I mean. You know, is there a is there a point where you just you you're building a collection and you get to a plateau, and then you, if you buy anything else, you start thinking, well, well, I've got too much stuff, and then you start wanting to kind of sell stuff off. Well, that's kind of where I've got to. I've probably got to a point I've got too much, and now I'm thinking, is it maybe time to cut back? So I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, that's uh, <coughs> excuse me. That's point number one. Next one, as you know, I just make up random subjects. Meme falling out of love. What do I mean by that? Um, the story with me, I mean, Meme Meister, there's a step for a hint, the fact that I'm called Meme Meister. Um, I don't know if I've ever discussed this before. Back in, I've, since, since I got the Amiga and I discovered you could emulate on the Amiga, that would be back in 1995, I've always had an interest in playing old systems again. And I can always remember, 1997, I got a phone call from my mate and he told me that he had something that was going to absolutely blow my socks off. Um, and then he told me what it was. It was a, a disc which had the Arcade Space Invaders, Galaxy and a few other kind of games. Now, I'd never heard of this thing. Apparently, it was called MAME. Now he was going to get this disc for me, which he duly did, he got it for me. And uh, I put this into the PC, and when I fired it up, there was a list of like Galaxian, Space Invaders, 
I don't know, Pac-Man I think it was, there's maybe I don't know, 50, odd, 50 odd games and uh, loading up Galaxy and, and just seeing this run on my PC it just it blew me away, I was just absolutely gobsmacked that I could have as far as I was concerned I had the arcade machine in my house ok I didn't have it in a cab but I was running the arcade machine and that just blew me away and that was the start of uh, my love for MAME um, <clears throat> excuse me when I when I was at work we got the internet um, again this was 1997 I think it was yeah, yeah probably mid 97 we got the internet at work and I had one office back then and uh, I was to discover a, a website called Dave Dave's Arcade Classics which some of the older retro gamers may remember and it was basically, it hosted all the games for me and you could just click on it, there was none of this bloody capture thing or download links and that kind of shit it was a straightforward click in the link, your kung fu, bonk, save file, away you went so over the over the months I started to download all these games because I didn't have the internet at home at that point I started to download all these games and uh, I think I ordered myself a box of floppies at work and I was putting them onto floppies, taking them home, transferring the files across and uh, I soon built up quite a, a collection of MAME then, oh pardon me, I really I do apologise guys, I shouldn't eat an Indian takeaway before coming on camera so anyway yeah um, and then over the period, every maybe two or three weeks, there would be an announcement that the new version of MAME was coming out and it was going to be including, you know, X number of games and it was so exciting. The buzz you got when you saw, you know, these games are going to be supported. I mean, you need to try and understand what it was like back then. You know, I, mean, I mentioned Year, Year Kung Fu, that was actually supported far later on. But I can remember, that was one of my favourite arcade games, and I can remember seeing that that was going to get supported. And to me, it was like it was like Christmas. It was like somebody giving me a year Kung Fu arcade game when I eventually downloaded the latest version of MAME and got the, the games for it. It was just, I say, it was absolutely incredible. Um, so this went on for a good number of years. Then, over a period of time, it got to a point um, where the ROMs that you had when a new version came out that supported gay, uh, game A, B, C, whatever it was you found that other versions didn't work which I couldn't understand and apparently it was because as the programmers were tweaking the, the sort of emulation of a particular game all the more the ROMs were sort of changing um, so it meant that you know you would download a new version of MAME you'd get maybe 20 new games but you'd find that maybe 10 of the Ten would no longer work. So what you had to do was download the latest versions of these games. So this went on for a good few years. Um, I mean, it was all dial-up modem sort of thing. There was none of your broadband back then. But then it got to a point, I would probably say ten years ago, if not more, where I simply stopped um, updating my meme. Um, I mean, I had every game that I could possibly want. I mean, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not even been following the meme scene all these years because I know you know the games that they were adding were just these big kind of multi multiple cab um, quad processor games that you, you couldn't play you simply couldn't play in a PC certainly not the PC I had um, and it was just supporting things like your dance dance revolution games um, I mean now I mean saying that I've got a new I've got the latest version of meme on my meme cab and you know it's something outrageous like 10,000 games it supports but the thing is when you actually look at the games there's probably maybe 20 30 games that I, I still play that I actually would ever want to play sort of thing so you know I don't know what 10 into 10,000 is probably like 1% of the games I'd actually play so yeah I stopped downloading MAME 10 years ago I mean there was a thing there's a program is it CL Pro or something it's called where it'll actually it'll actually update the ROMs you've already got to work in the latest version of MAME but I just basically got tired of having to constantly update my ROMs um, and what they did was, I mean, when you when MAME first came out they supported high score um, saving which was excellent now you need to remember that a lot of games, probably the majority of arcade games when you 
switched the machine off at night, the scores were reset, um, you know, you switched it back on the next day, it was just back to zero again. So these games didn't, very few games actually saved high scores in memory. So over the over the period, the the main programmers have, you know, they want what they've actually said is the fact that you can play games in MAME is just a, a handy uh, side effect, if, if you will. Um, they never wrote MAME to be able to play games. They wrote MAME so that they can emulate the timing of the, the circuits and all this kind of nonsense. To me, which is a lot of shite, I mean, <laughs> what good is, you know, uh, getting the timing right? It's all about playing the games to me. I mean, if you can't play a game, then I really don't see the point of it. But yeah, basically the developers of MAME ended up kind of going up their own backside. So they were actually making, as you actually found that, excuse me, as more and more versions, with every kind of uh, release of MAME, there was more games broken. Um, so games that were working previously no longer worked. And they did away with the saving of the games. At one point, every game used to save. But they did away with that for whatever reason, because it wasn't accurate. It wasn't accurately emulating the games. So yeah, I've I've kind of stopped updating my meme. I stopped doing that about ten years ago. Um, but saying that, to me, meme is one of the, if not the greatest computer game type programs that's ever existed. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest, if I was stuck in a desert island and I was told I could take one one machine that I've got in this room with me, you know, electricity the lock type thing, it would be my meme cab because. Uh, these games, arcade games, are absolutely, they're, they're timeless classics. You never get to the end of Pac-Man. Well, technically that's probably that's probably a bad uh, choice uh, because you do get the end of Pac-Man if you're really good. But you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that's MAME. Um, I'm going to stop this, guys, because it'll cut out when it gets to 2 megs. So back into... Okay, back again. So yeah, that was uh, my love affair with MAME. Um, fantastic thing. Right, this is my third one that is called The Good Old Days of, uh, what did I call it? Multiplayer Gaming. What does that mean? Um, over the last few weeks, Ava, um, my daughter and I have been uh, playing the meme cab and we've been playing Bomberman. And it just, I'd actually forgotten about how much fun it is standing or sitting, whatever you want to call it shoulder to shoulder with somebody and competing at a game. Um, we've lost that. I mean, back in the day when it was 8-bit machines, you know, your pal would come over and you'd joystick each, whatever you're playing, international soccer, exploding fist. You were taking on your pals and whatever at different games. Um, I mean, one of my fondest memories of multiplayer was playing uh, the Epix uh, Summer Games on the Commodore 64. And I can remember going up to one of my mates, uh, Shug, going up to Shug's house. And there was me, there was Shug, there was his brother Alan, his brother Stephen, and I think a couple of pals. There was something like seven of us in this room, crammed round the TV. Now the TV back then wasn't a 32 inch, it was probably a 14 inch black and white, or maybe colour actually. And we were playing summer games, and it was so competitive. Um, you know, you're going for the high scores, you were going to, to beat everybody else and when you won the gold medal, it was genuinely a feeling of you'd accomplished something. Um, I was always really good at the uh, the skeet shooting and so when it came to that event, I knew I was favourite and, you know, the adrenaline was going through your veins, you know, it was, it was, it might only be a, a video game, but the actual feeling of uh, sportsmanship and taking other people on was just absolutely brilliant. But yeah, um, as I say, playing, playing the, the meme cab with Ava, it's just made me realise just how much fun playing, you know, in the same room as somebody at a game. That's something that we've lost with the technology. Don't get me wrong, you know, you can power up your, your Xbox 360, whatever it is, and you can play Virtua Tennis against somebody in Chicago. And yeah, that's awesome. I mean, you can even put a headset on, you can even talk to them, and that's great. But it's just not, it's not the same. It's just not as good as uh, being in the same room as somebody. I mean, uh, 
when I go to the, the computer club at Edinburgh Retro uh, PC Club, you know, we have uh, we usually take along a meme cab or whatever. And uh, even stuff like uh, one of the guys, Ian, he's got a, it's a jamma board, um, super gun I think it's called, and he had his, uh, what was the board, commando, he had his commando board along last week, and we were taking it in turns to play it, and just, there's this whole competitive um, aspect that you get, you're, you're kind of, you're, you're, I wouldn't say you're cheering each other on, it's probably the opposite, you're actually kind of willing them to die, and you know, it's brilliant, you know, you're sitting watching them play, I mean, I suppose it, it goes back to the, um, it goes back to the whole um, community thing back in the arcades. It's probably really hard for anybody that's under the age of, I would say, probably 35 years old to appreciate just what the arcades were like. The arcades were a very, very, it was, it was a world of seediness that your mum and dad didn't want you to go. It was arcades back in the day, they were usually quite dimly lit, the carpets were always stinking, you know, probably beer and looking cigarette smoke and God knows what else, um, but, you know, they were, it was inhabited with all these people, and you, you, you know, you were just wandering about and you, were, you, would, you would see a machine and you'd see somebody playing it and you'd just stand and watch them playing it and, you know, especially, I mean, I certainly wasn't good, but, you know, if you've got somebody who was particularly good at a game, you would find that people would start crowding around them and it was like they became a bit of a, kind of a celebrity, you know, people watching just how good these guys were at games. Um, so yeah, you, you just, nowadays you don't, you miss, you miss having real people with you when you're playing video games. Um, you just don't get that playing online games. Now, Monkey Spaz 5000, he actually, uh, he had a, a, a question for the community and I can't remember exactly how he worded it but it was more or less along the, the lines of uh, do, when you're playing games online do you talk? Um, now when I first got my Xbox 360 absolutely I did and um, that was you know we'd gone from I mean playing I know you could play games online on the PC I was never a PC gamer but when I got my Xbox 360 and the game in particular that was the first game was it Ridge Racer 6, Ridge Racer 7, I can't remember what one it was, and then latterly it was Gears of War, and uh, me and a, a group of guys on one of the forums that I'm on, we used to, you know, play teams at Gears of War, and it was just amazing, I think playing with people that you know, you get the camaraderie, you get the slagging, you've got the kidding on, you've got the whole, the whole thing going on there, and that is amazing fun, so yeah, when I first got it, I was always using the headset. Um, being Scottish, um, it's amazing how many people don't understand the accent. Um, so I found that when I was playing these games away from my kind of pals, I was going online and playing against Americans. I, I don't know what it was. You had the American accents and they're quite soft, all the American accents, they're all talking away. And then I would say something and it was like, really gritty and and people were like sorry man what was that what were you saying man and I'm like you know what just shut up people don't understand what I'm actually saying so there was a bit I wouldn't say I got a, compl a complex but it just got to the point I thought nah I'm not talking um, so yeah that kind of dropped off and what, um, what um, Monkey Spaz 5000 was saying is he was playing uh, what was he playing Plants vs Zombies, I think it was, um, online on the PS4, and there's absolutely no talking at all now. People are just playing it. So if you lose that human aspect, for all intents and purposes, you could be playing against bots, which is a shame because you know um, having the voice, having being able to speak to somebody is all part of it. In fact, there's something that I forgot to mention. Um, I picked up Virtua Tennis for the PS3 for, excuse me, for, was it £2.50? And that was delivered. Um, one of my mates, uh, he picked up the same game on the PS3, £2.50. And most weeks we play, um, we play this game and we basically rip the shit out of each other. 
I mean, we just take the piss out of each other the whole time. Um, and to be honest, that's probably more entertaining than actually playing the game. It's brilliant fun. He's Welsh, I'm Scottish. We just take the utter piss out of each other. And that's that's absolutely hugely fun. In fact, there's another... There's another. I'm kind of I'm waffling here, which is what I should be doing anyway. There's another game, um, virtual virtual pool. Yeah, virtual pool. Um, it came out. It was well, virtual pool one, and it's now up to virtual pool four. Now, about ten years ago, um, I was playing virtual pool two. I think it was, and you had to use this uh, front end called Game Spy, which was like the thing that put it online, and. Uh, when you're playing this virtual pool thing, you could talk, it wasn't through a headset, you could talk just by typing. And uh, you could be in playing a game of pool and talking away. And there's this one guy we, we kinda got kinda got talking and it got to a point we would meet online and play. And uh, this guy's name was uh, Barry X. And uh, <laughs> that would be what nineteen sorry, two thousand and one, something like that. Barry X proper name is Mark. I'm going to Mark's wedding next year. Mark was at my wedding um, five, six years ago, whatever. So out of the community thing online, I made a friend for life. You know what I mean? I've known Mark all these years, and it was we got to know each other purely and simply through playing online. Um, so yeah, having the, the the connection like that is amazing. But I'm kind of going off topic a wee bit. I says, uh, what's your thoughts on you know do you miss do you miss the banter? Five or six years playing Daily Thompson's Decathlon, playing Match Day, the, the kidding each other on, having going for high scores. You, you've lost. I feel that we've lost that. I, of course, we've lost it. You know. I mean, there's. I suppose uh, guys our age, you don't have. It's not like you're you're no longer fourteen years old getting your pal back for school. We're forty years old. Chances are, any time we game. You're gaming on your own. I mean, I'm lucky that my, my daughter's quite. She quite enjoys video games, so I've got a wee kind of gaming buddy, which is fantastic. But uh, so guys like us, to get to, you know to play with other people, we're having to go down the online route, um, which just isn't the same. It's just not as good as sitting in front of a TV, two joysticks, playing track and field, whatever it is you're playing. Um, I certainly miss that. Um, you know that was. Uh, that was a, a special time back in the day. But what are your thoughts, guys? On do you miss the kind of the, you know, the the, the banter that you get playing games? Um, you know, we're kind of now reduced to just using headsets, which, which just doesn't give you the same kind of atmosphere. But anyway, I'm kind of drying up in this subject, so I think uh, you've got the drift. And the very very last thing. Now this this thing here. Um, as I've probably mentioned before, I write for a, or I used to write for We Are The Rodent. It's an online uh, magazine. I used to write articles. Now, one of the articles that I, I wrote, and I, I used to actually think it was quite funny, and I thought I'm going to read it to you today. It's called 50 Reasons Why You Know You're a Retro Gamer. So bear with me. Number one, the 17 year old from accounts at work stands and talks to you about computer games rather than guys from his, old, his own age group. Number two, you drew Space Invaders on your TV with a marker pen because your mum and dad couldn't afford the real thing. And that was true by the way, I actually did that. I had a TV and I drew uh, the Space Invaders on it. Number three, at 18 years old on payday you rush to the computer shop before it closes to pick up Beachhead. Number four, you look back in the diary you kept in 1985 and there isn't a single day where you didn't spend at least four hours playing your Commodore 64. Number five, you hear from a mate you've not seen for 20 years via email and the first thing he asks you, are you still into computer games? Number six, you spend New Year's Eve in 1987 all alone playing Gauntlet on your Commodore 64. That's another true story. Um, all my pals are out celebrating New Year and I sat in and played Bloody Gauntlet in the Commodore 64. Number seven, your dad thought you were gay because of all the time you spent playing computer games. That's another true fact. Because I, I sat in all, day, all the time and played video games 
he thought I wasn't interested in women, not realising that I was just a uh, hugely shy and didn't have the balls to ask out some uh, anybody. So anyway, yeah. Uh, but, uh, number eight, your marriage goes horribly wrong, and part of the reason is a portion to your gaming obsession. That's also true. I think I touched on that in a waffle before. Number nine, if you lose your new missus in Asda, she will always be sure to find you at the computer mag stall or mag section. Number ten, you hang about in a forum and discuss games from 1983. Number 11, you spend Saturday nights playing international soccer rather than being in discos pulling birds. That's also embarrassingly true. Number 12, you know that Blabby Software wrote Barney Burgers on the Spectrum. Number 13, you still to this day having a dying sound effect embedded in your memory from uh, some shitty third rate platformer on the Commodore 64 called sorry called ghouls and uh, basically the sound of when you died it went whoop, whoop. and I can remember that sound it used to bug me and it, for years I used to think about what was the name of the sound what was the name of the sound and I eventually sussed it and say uh, ghouls try it die and you'll see what I mean you go dewy eyed and wish you were 18 again when the names Clive Sinclair Jack Tremiel and G Minor are mentioned. Number 15, you know that Atom, Game Genie, Sword, Texas T1994A, Jupiter Ace, Lynx and Atmos were all names of computers. Number 16, you wish you hadn't been your Zap, Games Machine, CNVG, the Home Computer Course and Ace Magazine Collections. Number 17, you paid £100 for a machine made in 1983 called Vectrex. Number 18, your mate loaded a game on your Commodore 64 in 1983 and you left it switched on for three full days so you didn't lose the ability to play it. That's also true. Um, I only had two games and both were shit. And Brian came up and loaded up Kong by Anarog Software and I refused to turn it off because uh, he didn't give me a copy of the game but I knew as soon as I switched it off I'd lost the game so all I did was leave my, my 64 on all that time Number 19, you wish for a bigger house solely so you can have a room dedicated to every console and computer ever made Number 20, you walk past all the current gen sections in game and head straight to the retro section well, not that was much a retro section that was more relevant when game used to support, uh, sell retro stuff Number 21, you surf the net and listen to Monty on the Run score uh, table theme instead of a proper CD. Number 22, you realise that every mate you ever made and still have was met through the medium of owning a computer. And that's also true. I think every mate I've got, um, maybe bar one, um, my mate told me who I go out running with, has all been through computers. I'm going to switch it off for a second guys and switch it back on, I'm back into it. Okay, number 23. You buy cutting edge tech and the first thing you do is spend ages trying to get a Spectrum emulator to work. Is it just me that does that? Bought an iPad, I queued up for hours eh, to get an iPad 4, iPad 3 sorry. And the first thing I did was eh, put emulators on it after a jail broken it. Number 24. You shelled out £100 on an X arcade stick so you could get that authentic um, gaming feel. 25. In MAME, you attempt to play a shitey cassette based golf game you remember from the Chippy in Craig's Hill just because you can. Pardon me. Yeah, it was this uh, game. I can't remember. It was actually it was a, it was a, a cassette in an arcade machine. It is actually in MAME and it was a deco golf or something. It's absolutely shite. But just being able to load up that game and see it again was absolutely amazing. Um, 26. You can still see the Donkey Kong machine in the taxi office in the mall. In other words, uh, there was a taxi office in the mall and they had a Donkey Kong machine and I can still visualise it to this day. 27. You hung about the electronic section in World Coat at lunchtime so you could play their ColecoVision Donkey Kong. 28. You'd stand for ages and watch the Spectrum and Commodore 64 games running in John Menzies' shop window. 
I'm sure we all did that. 29, you remember that you bought Jammin' from Task Set in John Lewis's in Glasgow, Bruce Lee's Summer Games Beachhead from Ray's Shop, you got a copy of Mr Mephisto from Sharon Crosby in fifth year at school, and a copy of Taipan for the ST in Ray's Shop while well, he was in the back making a cup of tea, which I mentioned last uh, mashup, mash up uh, last waffle. 30. You prefer the old Commodore 64 music to the ultra realistic stuff in PCs nowadays. 31. It annoys tits off you when you hear people generalise and say, my son has PlayStation, meaning they own a computer or console of some description. Even more annoyingly, it probably is a PlayStation. 32. You scoff when people tell you that they've been into games, they've been playing games since Tomb Raider. 33. Your nickname on the net is Meme Meister. 34. Your right arm actually got more muscular through repeated Activision decathlon sessions, and it was definitely nothing to do with specialist repetitions. Number 35. You can please women with your vibrate finger, honed and above games. 36. You inquire to a mate if he still has his Commodore 64 stuff, and would he consider selling it? 37. Any time you have spare cash, computer gadgety stuff is always the first thing that springs to mind. Number 38. You think of Manic Miner as being a recent game, and that's true. Um, I had been into, into computers for about two years before Manic Miner and so I always thought Manic Miner was one of the more kind of modern games or more recent games. 39. You remember Sonic the Hedgehog as being a very recent game. That's absolutely true again. 40. You used to sit up to 5am playing Hustler in the Commodore 64. Very true again. 41. You take 30 year old computer magazines into the bath to read. 42. You wish you hadn't chucked out your guide to computer and video games you bought in 1983. Um, well, that's a duplicate. 44. You boast to unimpressed people that you know Jeff Minter and you once spoke to Archer McLean. 45, and this is true. You played Legend of Zelda on the Game Boy Advance while your wife was having her contractions next to you. That's true. 46. You detest people with Space Invader and Atari logo t-shirts because they weren't even there and don't know what the fuck they stand for. Now this is dating it a wee bit, this one. 47. You spent £350 on a Radeon Pro 9700 graphics card and you still play mainly, mainly emulators on it. Number 48. You can still recollect tunes and sound effects from 30 year old games. 49. You score full marks in retro gaming quizzes on Facebook. And the last one, number 50. Your daughter goes to school and tells her pals she was playing Bomberman in the SNES and Rodland on MAME. And that's also true. Anyway guys, I think I have just about wrapped it up. Um, coming up next week, I've got another uh, Arcade Perfect My Arse all signed and sealed and uploaded. I'm just uh, waiting to share it with you guys, but I'm going to leave it a few days. Um, I've got my, I'm going to do my uh, what stuff what I bought, um, number two, and I'm going to show you this uh, little thing that I bought um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I do apologise if anybody's been uh, wanting to see my uh, I Want To Be A Video Game Champ um, that I started on Missile, uh, Missile Command. I've just, you know what, doing these Arcade Perfect um, programmes has taken up an awful lot of my time and uh, I've just really not had the opportunity to, to get around to playing that. Saying that guys, I don't mind because uh, as much as it's nice for people to, to watch videos, at the end of the day it seems to be that these videos that I'm making are more popular. So I'm you know, I'm here to provide stuff that you guys want to watch. 
So if you guys enjoy watching the Arcade Perfect uh, My Arse uh, videos, then I'm going to make these. Um, it doesn't mean I'm not going to make, I'm going to stop making other videos. But uh, yeah, I need to get back into I Want to Be A Video Game Champ. I've just not had a chance, but I'll probably get one done uh, this weekend anyway, or this week at least. I'll make a point of that. Um, anything else? No, don't think so. Don't think so. And my very, very last thing. Um, when we're doing the podcast, the Edinburgh Retro PC podcast, one of the guys, Ian, um, told me something that I didn't know. A PlayStation 3, um, unless you've got the old version, the, is it the fat 60 gig version, um, it used to be able to play PlayStation 2 games, but any other model of the PlayStation 3 does not play PlayStation 2 games. But what Ian told me is any PS3 plays PS1 games. Now, I'd never heard of that. I don't know whether I'm the only person that, that didn't know that. Um, but I tried it this afternoon, and he's absolutely bang on. You can play any PlayStation 1 game on a PlayStation 3, doesn't matter what model it is. Um, and you've even got the option to kind of make the graphics slightly kind of smoother looking. So I was playing uh, Ridge Racer Revolution on my PS3, and it looks really good. It seems to play full speed. Um, the sound sounded perfect as well. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Top tip. From your uncle uh, Mainmeister. Right guys, I think this video has gone on long enough. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching it. Please feel free to leave uh, any comments. I would appreciate any likes. And if you want to see uh, more videos from my good self, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, please follow me on Twitter. As you may know, I've uh, set up a Twitter account, Mainmeister. Just search Mainmeister on Twitter. And uh, once I post a video, the first thing I do is post it onto Twitter. So if you want to keep up to date as and when I'm releasing videos, then Twitterize yourself. And uh, yep, that's it. As usual guys, hope you enjoyed watching. Have a great weekend if uh, you're watching this um, before the weekend. And uh, as usual, thanks for watching.